Hello and welcome to ET Garage. Today's video is about how I finally got this thing out driving on the road. Alright, like I was saying, I finally got the Corvette out on the road and driving. Um, I had lots of little issues that were aggravating as hell before I get in that. I want to thank the uh, guys over on that helped out on 3rd Gen Org and on the Corvette Forum. And a guy named Mike, he's on both those forums. And uh, he sent me a bin file or a tune from a Mini Rand, which helped out a lot. Uh, so I will leave links to those threads in the description box. And, uh, and some other links too. But uh, I want to thank those guys first before I get started. One of the biggest problems I had when I first uh, started this motor up, it would start right up, it would idle, it would run, but then when you, as soon as you gave it any gas, it would just backfire out the exhaust and pop and all that stuff. And uh, the uh, wideband was reading way lean where it wasn't wouldn't even wouldn't even read. Same with the O2 sensor. So. Uh, I knew I was having a false lean problem. I could tell because the plugs were black. So I figured it's more. it was very rich. I kept working on it. I kept reducing the, uh, playing with the uh, fueling tables. And, and it would, nothing would help. And it turned out, the problem was that it wasn't too rich. It was the problem the spark plugs were too cold. Um, I used spark plugs that TrickFlow said to use with these heads. Now you can use any spark plug as long as it's the correct kind and the correct length and the correct thread size, of course. But uh, So I took those out and I used the spark plugs that I was using in my tune port, which were a lot hotter. That fixed the problem. Uh, I was able to finally get some decent readings on the wideband and stuff like that, but I still have problems uh, getting the VE map correct or the fueling table correct. So uh, that guy, Mike, he sent me, so I went on a few and started a thread, and the guy, Mike, sent me a, uh, a bin file or a tune. People who aren't familiar with what a bin file is for a mini RAM, which is pretty close to the same type of manifold this is. It's basically a short runner intake. That helped a lot. Uh, that tune was still wasn't drivable. It... Uh, Especially like on a cold start, it wouldn't stay running unless you held the throttle at like 15 to 2,000 RPM until it warmed up. So uh, basically I just took, copied, used my old tune and copied a lot of the perimeters like the fueling tables, spark tables, and some other tables and perimeters over to that that I, th that I thought I would need. And I still need to make a lot of adjustments to the tune yet, but it's uh, a, hell, a hell lot better. And... This motor runs really strong, by the way. It runs really strong and smooth and quiet. It's just uh, drivability that has to do with the tune that I got to work on and the fuel and fine tune the fueling tables and stuff like that. Uh, I did go back to those cold plugs, but what I did was I installed, I have an Intellitronics capacitive discharge multi spark unit. Uh, that I had installed years ago. And then when I upgraded my distributor on my tune port, which is a large cap distributor, to a Davis Unified one, you don't run a capacitive discharge with that distributor. It has plenty of spark on its own. So I removed it. But I went and installed the cold plugs back in again, but with that capacitive discharge unit, and they work fine uh, because that creates a hell of a lot of spark. Yeah. Um, that, however, is causing problems with the tachometer on the dash. It didn't when I had the large cap, so I gotta, I might have to remove it and see if that fixes the problem. I do, I'll just have to go back to the hot plugs, and take those cold plugs back out. Another thing I did was, well, another thing I was having problems with was my laptop. Uh, my old laptop died over the winter. Yeah, I had that for a long time, it was a cheap laptop. And it worked very well with Tuner Pro. My new laptop decided to upgrade and get a better laptop, and that's Windows 11, and it did not want to play well with the old old software, the Tuner Pro software. I did the compatibility uh, changes that, that you can do. You make it run on the older operating systems, 
and that helped a little bit, but then I had all sorts of other issues too, where it's just buggy as hell. I had problems with my adapters, my MebCal adapters, all sorts of little things like that just uh, hindered it from getting any type of a tune in it. Uh, I finally got my new adapter yesterday, or was it yesterday or the day before, but it don't matter. Uh, MemCal adapter, I'll leave, like I said, I'll leave a link to that in the description back box. That's from Boosted NW. Um, I'll show a picture of it too, if you don't know what it is. And, uh, and that just makes it a lot easier. Instead of changing the whole MemCal, you're taking the MemCal out in and out of here. And every time you take it in and out, in and out, it's not designed to that. It's designed to go in there one time and stay there. Every time you take it in and out, in and out, you're basically wearing out the prongs and the little prongs inside the memory adapter that make electrical contact, which is real critical on something like this. And that was causing me problems. Now with the uh, MemCal adapter, it has a little lever and you just change this one little chip and you piggyback your old MemCal because it has the knock sensor on it. It also has a uh, limp home, home mode in it, but once you modify the motor, that limp home mode doesn't work. It didn't, actually never worked well with a stock motor, the limp home mode, anyone who's ever had to use it. All those little problems led to a lot of wasted fuel and time. In fact, I almost ran the tank dry first time I took it out. The uh, first thing I had to do is run straight to the gas station. So I went ahead and filled it up and I went and put some uh, heat in it just in case there was any water or, or condensation in the bottom of the tank. Uh, I was running, I wanted to use my 30 pound uh, injectors that I was using on my tune port. They don't fit this right. They have these little lumen adapters that don't fit right. I tried machining one and that just didn't work. It's just not enough material there to do it correctly. So uh, I ended up upgrading the fuel injectors to 30 pounds because I know that 24 pounds, I could have tuned it on the 24 pound and then upgrade it later to the 30 pounds. I know I'm going to need the 30 pounds with the way this thing is pulling up top. And uh, so I just went and ordered some XL 30 pound injectors. Uh, I got 24 written on here. That's because I put the old 24s in here. But they're 30 pound injectors in there. And one tip. Uh, the 24 pound ones I had in there were trick flow, uh, were uh, the trick flow injectors, and they're very good injectors. And uh, but they're actually XL injectors, and if you buy the XL injectors, they're a lot cheaper than the trick flow injectors. But they're the exact same injectors, whether they're the 24 or the 30s, they're just different uh, fuel ratings. Uh, so I just went and got the XL. In fact, the uh, the uh, fuel injector offset, which is a table in the, uh, the settings in the software for those injectors, for the trick flows, you actually use the XL uh, offsets because that's what they are. They're XL injectors. So if you want to save yourself some money, uh, get the XLs instead of the trick flows. They're the same thing. Uh, another problem I'm having is with the header on this side. These heads, these new heads, they I guess the uh, exhaust flange is out just a, a little bit more. This header was real close to the heat shield underneath the car, and it would rattle up against it sometimes. Now it's like right up against it. That and the thick uh, header gasket I'm using. So I might take that header off and machine it down a little bit so it tilts a little bit at an angle. And it's also causing my uh, O2 bung to kind of hit up against the, the fiberglass floor. So uh, I'll probably take that header off and relocate that bung and machine that surface so it's not rattling up against that uh, heat shield. Um, hopefully I'll get this all straightened out this week where I can get it on a dyno and then a test and tune if possible. I think it's in a couple of weeks in new media. I'm not really a drag race person. Every It's always good to go do a test and tune every now and then just to see how the car performs. Hopefully nothing breaks. And I guess that's about it now for this video. Uh, that uh, capacitive discharge unit, when I had it with my large cap uh, distributor on the tune port, 
I didn't have any problems with the tachometer. Sometimes they'll cause problems with the tack on the dash. This now, with this small cap distributor, is causing problems with the tack on the dash. So I have to do, look into fixing that. Um, I don't know. I guess I could rattle on and on and on. But uh, all I can do for now is, is work on the tune. i got to fix that header. Fix the problem with the tack on the dash. Little things like that. Uh, mostly I'm going to concentrate on getting this tune right. That's, that's the most important thing. So I guess I'll end the video here. And uh, everybody have a great day and God bless.